Rank play is only a day or so away now, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited. I'm a die-hard sweat when it comes to rank play. I mean, I could only ever manage to get Crimson last year in MW3, but I'm not ready to talk about that yet. Anyway, enough about me. Let's get into everything you need to know before this drops in a couple of days, because there's a few little changes that have been made that are actually quite good. So pretty much exactly as last year, the divisions are bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, crimson, iridescent, and the top 250. But this year comes with an extra spot that essentially none of us will really have to worry about, champion. This is the top player of the leaderboard that season. Y yeah, nah, not even my ego has me deluded enough to believe that I'll even get into top 250 in the world, let alone being that guy. So you can see on the screen here, the skins that you'll be earning at each division. You will receive these at the end of the season and it's completely based on your best placement. So not your current season at end. So if you reach Crimson 1 mid-season, for example, but end up in Diamond 3 at the end, you will get the Crimson themed reward. So the skin, presumably a little weapon charm, whatever it may be, a, a title or whatever camo. But before you go and worry about any of that, I hope you have been playing pubs because, well, and to much dismay of my public match hate and viewers out there, you need to. Last year, you needed to reach level 55 before you could enter rank play. Whereas this year, you need 50 wins in public matches in place of that. In theory, you know, this should be easier, but if your teammates are anything like what mine can be in pubs, yeah, no, I, I feel sorry for you because it, it can be fucking painful. This is claimed by Treyarch to be of the benefit to Ricochet, their anti-cheat system, so they can get a better sense of the player and to make sure hackers aren't just straight up waltzing into ranked and ruining everyone's day on a Smurf account. So Cryptic briefly mentioned this topic the other day, and no, if you're new to the channel, I'm not weirdly talking about myself in the third person. I'm Cozy, usually the editor, but today the voice of God. Anyway, HPR, so Hidden Performance Rating. Like Cryptic, I'm not going to go too into this because there's some really good videos around on YouTube that if you wanted to dive a bit deeper into it, you can. But essentially, it's a further skill-based matchmaking behind the already visible rank system, determining where you realistically should be placed. So if HPR determines you as a Diamond player, you'll get a lot of SR skill rating in the earlier games to help you get to where they determine you should be quicker. Whereas if you're determined to only be a gold player, you could go absolutely ham in the lobby, get a load of kills, 200 plus seconds on the hill in hardpoint and only get 30 SR. Yeah, we've all been there. So yeah, because of that, you will need to do your 50 public matches wins, which, like I said, it can be either easy or painful. It's probably going to be more painful if you're actively focusing on trying to get the win. It'll probably feel like you're in rank ranked in itself. In fact, you know what? With skill how skill-based matchmaking is in pubs, I feel like I've been playing ranked since the game dropped, unless I'm in with my mates who have lower KDs, and even then it's not fun. Okay, so back to the ranks. The ranking system has not changed. You play matches, the better you perform, both kills and objective-wise, the more SR you get. Well, in theory, it is, you know, just just mentioned there's also three subcategories if you will within each division being one two and three so you'll start off in one work your way all the way up to three so for example diamond three you complete diamond three you get to the skill rating the sr sort of benchmark say 1900 for example and that'll then put you into the next one up so crimson in this case i won't go too much into it because it is quite self-explanatory and there'll be a whole like sort of like time frame which you can see what SR you need to get and where and it'll keep you up to date and sort of like moving along as you get closer but unfortunately gone are the days of Black Ops 2 with your five placement games and it being an actual fair reflection of your performance. Something completely new to ranked for just us normal players anyway which I think is really cool and what has been used in the pro scene for quite a while when it comes to the tournaments map and mode vetoes so essentially players in the pre-game lobby will be presented with three maps and the mode that they will be played on each map. Teams can then go to vote to veto whichever they want, and this will then be removed. And then a random choice of the one of the two that was left over after the veto will then be selected as whatever you will go and play. I honestly can't wait to never play red card. I mean, Treyarch, nice looking map, but it just plays like shit. Okay, so speaking of vetoes with your maps and modes, you can see on screen here what maps and what modes that we can get uh, from the rank play. And this is also the same for the CDL season. So for search and destroy, you've got protocol, red card, rewind, skyline, vault. Control, you've got the two maps, protocol and vault. And hardpoint, you've got protocol, red card, rewind, skyline, vault. 
So exactly the same as Search and Destroy. Um, yeah, I think Protocol, I'm not sure how I feel about, but then I'm biased because I've only played that in pubs and it's slow and it's horrible. You know, Rank does play very differently. Like I say, Red Card, I can't honestly see anybody picking that. It's a cool map, I just, it doesn't play right. Skyline, that's a fan favorite. I look forward to that. Rewind is a bit of a weird one. Vault, again, nothing crazy. So yeah, those are the maps and modes that you can expect to see on day one um, and watching as you watch the CDL season. So similar to Vito's, there are restricted items. So for your primary weapons, you've got all the LMGs, marksman rifles, all of them as well, shotguns, all of them, launchers, all of them. Your attachments, you can't have any lasers, you can't have the suppressor, there's certain optics that you won't be able to have, certain underbarrels, so you know, you like the drill charge, noob tube, stuff like that. Tacticals, you won't be able to have the decoy or shock charge spy cam, stim shot or proximity alarm, similar to lethals, you can't use most of them, so the blast trap, C4, combat axe, drill charge, impact grenade, molotov, and thermo grenade. Field upgrades, you can't have the acoustic amp, the morphine injector, neuro gas, scrambler, signal lure, sleeper agent, spring mine, tactical insertion, and war cry. And the perks you can't have, a ghost scavenger. Most of perk two was actually gone with assassin, bruiser, dispatcher, engineer, forward intel, shadow, and tracker. Perk three, most are gone as well, were bankroll, cold-blooded, gearhead, guardian, vigilance. So your specialty perk, you just can't have them. They, they You can't apply them, they won't kick in. Wild cards, you can't have danger close, overkill, prepper, tactical expert. Now your streaks, you essentially can't have any of them. I think the only one left is cruise missile. I think that's similar to last year. It's the only one you can actually have. Now these are things that are straight up removed. You can't use them. But there's also a thing in ranked and more amongst the pros uh, called gentleman's agreement of whether a weapon's been GA'd or not. Now I know that they've GA'd a shit ton already. I think the M4 is one of them. The Krig C is one of them. The SAUG, the SORG is one of them. I don't know in previous years that it's been implemented where GAs will carry through, but then in other years you can still use them. So it's completely up to you whether you want to use these depending on how it comes out on Thursday. I'm interested to see that snipers aren't straight up restricted. I think they weren't initially last year either, but then they ended up being and straight up removed from ranked as well for all of us. And this year snipers seem really powerful again. So it'll be interesting to see how long they last, if they last the full term. Cause I do think they have a place, like th there is a different element of play style that you have with a sniper and a way you have to play against them or a way that you play with them. And they, they are better for certain situations. And it, and it, it all depends on your situational ability. You know, I think that's what differentiates the pros between the casuals or the really good casuals is that situational ability like understanding what the situation you're in anyway i'm rambling at this point you now have a forfeit option historically there hasn't been a leave match button similar to pubs once you're in you have to ride it out of course you could just dashboard or close the application but then you would get banned for however many minutes depending on if you're a repeat offender or not and you would lose SR. I imagine even with the forfeit option, you would still lose SR, else this would just be abused with little to no consequence. And I'll be honest, I don't think my ego will let me use this much. But it's a nice option for teams to have, you know, if, if you have a teammate disconnect early on or whatever, for whatever reason, want to save time if you're just clearly getting stomped. Again, I don't encourage it because, you know, I think one of the best things for even the pro scene, but especially for your own experience when you're playing, the amount of times last year where I thought we were done and out and we were never going to win and we found a way to grit in and get it done and get that win. Oh, it's the, the sense of euphoria, euphoria is, yeah. I, but like I said, if somebody's disconnected early on, it's good to have the option there. So there won't be skill restrictions for matchmaking this year. And what I mean by this year is last year, if you were say in diamond, you wouldn't be able to go and play with a friend who's in silver. It just couldn't happen. It, they, the game wouldn't let you, you physically couldn't go into a game with them. But this year, there's none of that. You can, if you want to jump in as a bronze with your crimson, iridescent, or even top 250 friend, you can go and do that. So it seems that Treyarch have finally realized us generic players with full-time jobs tend to vary in ability wildly. Like I say, you know, me for example, I'm a sweat okay and i'm decent at cod my other mates not so much but now we can play together be warned though matchmaking will be based around that of the highest ranked player so if you're in silver and play with your friend in the top 250 bracket yeah seasonal setbacks have been lowered so again last year we saw at the end of each season you were pushed down to go to a lower division and would earn your way back up this year they aren't quite as intense so if you finish in bronze or silver 
you will stay there. Gold and Platinum, you'll just be sent back to Tier 1, and anyone Diamond or above will go back to Diamond 1. Now, trust me, this bit hasn't changed, and New Season Day is not fun for ranked players if you are a mediocre Diamond 2 player, because all of the top 250s and iridescence push back down just raining hell on you. You don't have a chance. It's, it's honestly crazy. Another nice little change here is this year you won't receive an SR loss for your first game of the day, which is nice. I feel like they're assuming that we're just going to lose our first game of the day, but the option is there, which is good. You can no longer turn off cross-play when in ranked Xbox players. You couldn't do this anyway. Well, not as easily or to work as well, but PlayStation players it was simple as just going into the Call of Duty menu and turning it off. Well, PlayStation players, if you did do this to avoid hackers, sorry, it's gone. I think it's stupid. Don't worry, I'm right there with you. I have often argued the fact of, well, at least let us console players just have an option where we play only console players and not PCs. Still cross-play, I just don't have to play against 700 frames, 240 refresh rate, and demons using their entire forearm to aim. I've just started the whole Abasis war in the comments now, haven't I? And finally, we are getting the CDL team skins and assumingly weapon charms, camos, etc. back. So you can rep represent your favorite team. Mine is the Thieves. I know, what a time to be me. Let me know down below who you follow. I've also got a soft spot for the rocker. I don't know if you were watching anything to do with the competitive scene in Cold War, but that reverse sweep comeback in the major, oh my goodness, if you haven't looked into that, just YouTube rocker reverse sweep comeback. There's like a whole dedicated montage by Call of Duty to it. It was that, yeah, just watch it. But yeah, all of these are quite basic actually. It's quite disappointing, it is what it is. But Boston's design team understood the assignment here. Thank you, Breach. Showing the others how it's done. That's, yeah, fair play. Anyway, that's pretty much all you really need to know for Ranked coming up. You know, those are the things that are staying the same, things that we got a couple of extra cool details. It drops on the 21st. I honestly can't wait. Annoyingly, I'm away this weekend. Me and Cryptic are actually meeting up, all boozing out on the town. I couldn't have sounded more like a virgin there if I tried, but I'm not redoing it. So yeah, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you did enjoy it, and just let us know down in the comments. Are you looking forward to rank? Do you feel like you've already gone through the fucking ringer in pubs enough as it is? And are you excited for the upcoming CDL season? Because I know I am, and we're actually getting it start before New Year. Like, getting the CDL season starting before the Christmas tree goes back in the loft, Attic, wherever you're from, incredible. Chef's kiss. Anyway, you know the drill. I'm done here. Peace and love, homies. Peace and love. <laughs>